Hey, welcome back to Art to Income, the podcast from Musicians Council to learn to navigate the modern music industry. I've been talking with Michael Elsner about music licensing, about creativity, and I want to talk with him now about an area of licensing music that people don't know much about, including myself, and it's a, it's a fascinating area. It's actually a, a top dollar area as well, and that is trailers. And I know, Michael, you have a company called Sonic Tremor. When did that begin and why? All right. Sonic Tremor uh, started in 2011. And it came about, uh, it, it honestly just came about in a conversation at a studio one time uh, with my writing partner. And what had happened was, uh, the little backstory to that is, I had gotten... Um, like the back back story is I did a solo guitar crazy shred record back in like 2006. And that got picked up by a particular library to license those tracks. And I developed a relationship with the president of that company over the next couple of years. I was delivering more songs to him. And then, you know, to me, it's all about relationships, you know, develop those relationships. And in 2010, his company had gotten uh, selected or not, I don't know if I should say selected, but he worked his, his way in as the main company that would provide music for American Idol. American Idol changed production companies at that time, and his production company became the music, uh, his, his library company became the, the, the music provider for seasons 11 and 12, which happened during 2010 and 2011. And so he reached out to me in 2010 and said, hey, you know, we need a lot of tension beds for, you know, this season of American Idol. And while that wasn't really anything I was interested in doing, I decided it would be a good, you know, uh, experience and, um, you know, and, and obviously good money and a great credit that would open up more doors down the road. So I started writing some tension beds and he got back to me about a week or two later and said, yeah, your tension beds suck. Uh, we're going to move on to someone else. And I said, well, give me, give me, give me, give me one more chance. Just give me like two days. Let me, let me try something else. And I called my buddy, Dave, uh, David Das, And, you know, I'm just a dumb guitar player who was trying to write like orchestral tension beds. What do I know about this stuff? But my, but David is an incredible composer. So I brought him on and he really orchestrated out some of the ideas that I had and he made them sound great. And so we, we ended up getting the gig, submitted those tracks. He got back to me and says, man, these, the, the production company, they love it. You know, you got it. So keep writing it. So we did that. Um, and then in, in 2011, uh, we were continuing to write now for season 12. And, um, and in the summer of 2011, uh, there was a person that we knew who released a trailer album. He released it through a different company. He literally did it in the bedroom at his parents' house. And within four months, he had had four licenses at around $25,000 each. And so that kind of made us stop and think a little bit about what we were doing because we were doing the exact same music for American Idol and we were doing a lot of it <laughs> and uh, like an unbelievable amount of it and killing ourselves for it. And we thought this guy wrote 10 songs and he's making, you know, six figures on these 10 tracks. That's a lot better than writing 10 tracks a week, right? So, so that's really what opened up the door. Uh, you know, I, I suggested, hey, let's look into trailers. So I spent about a month researching trailer houses and various websites and, and other production companies that were doing trailers at the time. Uh, there was one called Two Steps From Hell. And they, they were the biggest. Uh, there were these, uh, uh, there was another company which i forgot what they were were x-ray dog is was x-ray dog one of the big ones x-ray dog yeah so no. x-ray dog came out like right after yeah like around that time but they um I'm trying to think of another one it was it was the the two guys who became ninja tracks they sold their company and then they became ninja tracks i can't think of who they were right now but they were like the two steps from hell guys you know two mm -hmm. composers who were doing everything and i had just full tilt they were called full tilt so it was two steps from hill and full tilt were the two premier trailer companies at the time. And I told David, I said, man, we could, we could become the next premier trailer company. You know, I'm the rock guitar player. He's the, he's the smart, you know, composer or orchestral guy. Let's, let's do our own thing. Let's create our own sound. And so that's what we did. So we, we started Sonic Trimmer. We did uh, our first album, Dark Light, which was epic symphonic rock trailers. 
and that was really our that was how we learned how to write trailers we studied how to write trailers learned the, the three different elements that go into trailers we did dark light and then right after we did dark light i moved to nashville <laughs> and so um so we really built up sonic trimmer the entire time i lived in nashville um we followed that up with fire and ice which was our next um um epic symphonic rock trailer uh, album and then uh it was through that that we signed our deal that we have currently and then we followed that up with an album called tensity intensity uh it was like about two years after we did american idol we got the rights back to all our songs all the tension beds so we took all the tension beds back from the american idol years and we released it as as, a, as an album under the sonic trimmer name so intensity was that record so we just really kept building that up and diving more and more into that world as more and more people were getting into the licensing world um you know we just decided hey there's not a lot of people getting into the trailer world we already have the pop tracks and the rock tracks and all the other stuff that we do in you know there let's let's branch out a little bit and let's start you know diversifying a little bit and that's really where it came from and sonic trimmer has been uh, an incredibly successful venture for us i mean trailers are such a different t style of writing it, it, you know they are there it's there's a lot of stopping and starting there's I know, obviously yep. a lot of that has to do with the editing and the way the music editor puts a, a tr you know ultimately puts a trailer together to picture yeah. but when you're building catalog i mean one of the unique things about creating catalogs of music like you just talked about creating tension beds for american idol and so mm -hmm. for for viewers that don't have never done that process it's it's a similar process to putting together a catalog of music for any other reality tv show and one of the things that's so different about it from the kind of work a traditional composer does where you get film and you score yeah. the picture is you have no picture you have doing it blind. nothing yeah. to write music to and yet it needs to get sent by the internet and look perfect to picture okay so right? i'll, I'll give you a secret drop it in and go damn that's perfect yeah. so here, here, here's the secret uh youtube yes uh youtube uh youtube is the secret uh you can you can get these um i don't know if i i should be promoting it but you can get these different apps that allow you to burn uh like copy youtube videos so a lot of times when we're doing trailers i will you know I, like for example we did a uh, one of our last records we did was a uh, skylights and skylights is all family adventure family adventure is like all disney pixar films which is a very difficult yes. style to write because if it's if it's if it goes too far one way it becomes romance and if it goes too far the other way it becomes like action adventure family adventure is a very small little niche that we were getting asked for a lot so we decided well let's walk down that road well to write a lot of the family adventure stuff i just grabbed different pixar uh trailers and i and i I'd, I'd watch them as and i just kind of start scoring to them you know i bring them into my pro tool session and then i just start writing my own Thing. that inspired what I was doing and the same thing with like tension beds you know you can get online and you can find those moments where you know there's a there's a, a contestant standing in front of the judges it doesn't matter what show you're watching but they stand there and they prolong these moments of silence you know which obviously didn't really happen in real life but they cut to like you know where the the contestant is looking at the at the judges all nervous and the judges are looking at each other and you know and it's it's just that awkward you know 15 seconds and so your your job is to you know create the tension and so you bring those things in and you just mess with it and and the, so the, the the fun part about that is that you're not composing to it it doesn't have to be perfectly spot on like if you don't hit that drum right when it cuts to the to the to the you know to the edit it doesn't matter because they're not using that piece but you can totally get a good feel for what's working by doing that, by having a visual, as opposed to if you're just staring at a Pro Tool screen and hitting a bunch of, you know, keys on your keyboard to create these Tycho drum sounds. I mean, at that point, what do you know what you're doing? So, I, again, it comes back to what we said in a, in a previous um, recording where, you know, I said I'm very visual. And so having those visuals helps immensely. But when it comes to writing uh um, trailers trailers are written there's three acts basically to a trailer and this is all the stuff we learned when we first got into it we didn't know what we were doing you know we just had to watch a lot of trailers and read a lot of interviews with people who are in the trailer industry uh, trailers are written in three acts and uh, a great example of if anyone wants to go and listen to something that, that they could 
probably easily digest is uh, you can go on the Sonic Trimmer, T-R-E-M-O-R, sonictrimmer.com, and go listen to some of the tracks from our Swagger album. Our Swagger album is 70s Swagger Rock written in trailer-friendly formats. So think Led Zeppelin in trailer-friendly formats. And each of those songs has three sections. You know, we build each section kind of like a little mini song. And then, like you said earlier, like there's lots of stops and stuff like that. And it'll build to a climax and it'll, it'll hit and it'll end and maybe sustain. And then there comes like maybe a down section, but it's still just got the same groove and the same feel, you know, but it's, it's, that's the second moment, you know, that's the second section of the song. We'll spend maybe, you know, 45 seconds in that section. And then it builds to something and, and climaxes and sustains. And then we hit the final section, which is just that big bombastic in your head, you know, just absolute craziness that's going on to the final ending. And those are the trailer friendly formats. So if you want to hear what a rock track sounds like in trailer friendly formats, you can listen to Swagger. That was, that was probably our most fun album to do. We did that in about three months from start to finish, writing it to, to complete production. And uh, that's been one of our most su successful albums, but that's a great example of how to write for trailers. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, the, the, the insight you're offering on, on all different forms of inspiration, you know, downloading picture, watching interviews, studying the way experts do these things. I mean, this is all the stuff that goes into earning money with oh, yeah. your music. It's not magic. Yeah, it's, it's hard not. work. It is hard work and it is creative. Like, you know, like when you're, I'll be honest with you, I, I actually really enjoy, uh, it's extremely creative when you're, when you're putting music to picture. That's extremely creative. And I, I actually don't feel like you're confined by anything, especially in this world, because like the picture is just up there as added inspiration. There's no pressure of, oh, this has to be perfect. And right when it hits that moment, it has to stop and that, you know, all that kind of stuff. You don't have to worry about that because you're just using that as inspiration you know there's there's a there's there was one um uh what is his name? i think his name is colin farrell he's an he's a i think that's his name he's a actor there was some film he did with jennifer garner i forgot what it was but there's a moment in the trailer where this horse is galloping across what looks like the brooklyn bridge and that's one of my favorite moments in the skylights album um because at, during that section of the trailer it's just an, an orchestra playing like this cool little gallop thing. Um, but of course, it obviously wasn't used in that trailer because that trailer was a couple years old when we wrote the Skylights album. But when it comes to that, when I just listen to that piece and it comes to that moment, I think, man, this, this moment here in this trailer is, is beautiful, but it's inspired by this other trailer, you know? Um, and I, I love that. I think that's one of the most amazing aspects of writing music for TV. And the one thing I will say about writing music for TV that I think some people mistake is that, you know, when you're writing music for TV, you're just writing little snippets of music. No, we're writing full songs, whether it's a vocal song or an instrumental piece or a trailer piece. These are full pieces of music that you can put on a disc and you can listen to in your car and they're full listening experiences. You know, uh, from start to finish, each track is its own experience and, and it's a satisfying experience. So it's not just little snippets of music that you're writing. You're writing an entire piece. And ideally, you know, one of the nice things about placements is you get multiple placements on one song and one placement, they might use the first 30 seconds of it. And the next placement, they might use the middle 15 seconds. And in the third placement, they might use, you know, the, the first chorus into the first turnaround. And then the fourth placement, they might use the big ending, whatever. You can get so much mileage out of a three and a half minute piece with multiple placements over and over and over. It's, it's, a, it's, like, it's like having an investment in like a stock or something like that, right? You invest in one stock and as it, as it goes up, you make more and more money. Well, this is the same thing. You, you write one piece of music, you, you get multiple, multiple placements out of it and you make multiple upfront fees and then you make multiple back-end fees in your royalties. So yeah. it's a great investment in the long run. Yeah, and just like, you know, producing music and hearing it on the radio for mixes or hearing your songwriting with different artists, it's just experience. You, you start, you, you learn over time and you, you start to, 
yeah. you start to realize, wow, if I craft my pieces of music this way, they'll start to have multiple purposes yeah. or one, or they can be used in one linear piece, yeah. you know, the way I wrote it. Yeah. Well, Michael, awesome stuff. Let's, let's, uh, let's wrap up our inspiration uh, discussion here with a, a little inspiring news for our viewers. You've obviously built catalogs of music. I mean, I, I think you've had over 2,000 placements in film and television. over 2,200 now, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you showed before, you know, how when you first started off, how you were putting music on CDs. <laughs> when do you have enough music to begin the journey of, of taking on licensing clients and, and walking into this world? You know, I'll be honest with you. Uh, and I'm going to tell you a story of, of an artist that, I, that I've worked with who's been amazingly successful with four songs. Uh, I worked with this girl. We did a four song EP. It's like a pop country thing, like Carrie Underwood-ish, right? Um, she's had over 50 placements, over 52 placements um, on four songs. Now, one of them has had 38 placements. Uh, and then the other ones, like one had like, I don't know, you know, eight. And another one had a bunch more, you know, but we did a four song EP. Um, so it, if you have good music, it starts with good music and good songs, but beyond that, so much of it is making the connection with your end users and developing those relationships. When a music editor places your song on a show, you know, like if, if it's a, if it's a lot of shows don't have supervisors, like an HGTV show, right? They just have editors and, and those production companies have deals with different music libraries and those editors can just pull the music in, right? But you gotta keep in mind those editors work on so many different shows throughout the year. When you are when you get a, 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 even if it's a little placement on a show like we'll say HGTV, get on IMDB, look up the editor for the show, Google him, find his, his website or his Facebook or his LinkedIn or whatever and send him an email and send him a thank you. That goes so far because that one placement will probably turn into a placement in a day or two. Because the next time he goes into his office, he's going to be so happy that, wow, this person really cared about what I did and they thanked me. You know, they're going to turn around and they're going to, you know, try and find another place for your music. That's just the way that it is. It's a relationship business. Um, now, supervisors are a, bit a little difficult because they're, they're the new A&R. That's why I really put a lot of emphasis on, on music editors. But really, it's about developing the relationship with people and being a service to them. And this is a phrase that I use for a lot of young artists. Apparently, somewhere along the way, a lot of musicians got the idea that it's all about them. They got a memo that says, hey, listen, if you're releasing music and, and you're doing shows, it's all about you. So people have to buy your music and they have to come to your shows and, and whatnot. But the reality is that you're a service to your end users. When Justin Timberlake comes and he, and he sells out an arena, he's a service to every single person who paid the money to go to that show, right? When he's releasing a record, he's a service to all the people who are buying that record. If you're in the music industry, you're in the service industry. So if you want to get into the licensing world, your end users are your music supervisors, your music editors, and the individuals that work at the music libraries if you're working with a music library. So I always say be a service and not a narcissist. Because it's true. You know, it's not about you. It's about providing them with your music in the best way possible that allows them to easily search, audition, and license your music and makes it as easy as possible for them and then gives them as many options as possible as well with your music. When you do that, you make their life easy, you make their job easy, people are going to come back to you. Well, Michael, thank you so much for taking all this time, sharing so much information. I know there's just so much in that head. So I'm <laughs> excited for our users and our creatives to, to be able to book sessions with you and talk more with you and just kind of, I mean, I, I, I'm sure you would agree. I don't think we even just scratch the surface of no, no. how <laughs> there is to kind of digest and understand when you go through 15 years of experiences with 
with putting music to picture and sending music to supervisors and getting their comments and getting their feedback and seeing licensing deals happen out of nowhere and then yep. great ones fall through out of nowhere and you're like, oh, how did that happen? And yeah. you know, there's so much to this and so much to talk about. So I just encourage everybody at Musicians Council to, to check out your website, check out your calendar on musicianscouncil.com book sessions and, and talk with you more. So thank you awesome. so much for being a part Thanks, of this. Thanks, Doug. I appreciate it. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye now.